the topic of finding a mean of a frequency distribution is more important to you as a student than you realize. But hopefully this example will help you out. So we have a Math 133 syllabus that states grades are calculated as follows. So here's the grades over here, right? That's typical. You'll always see a grading scale in your syllabus somewhere. And then over here, the grades are calculated based on classwork, which is worth 20%, right? My stat lab worth is worth 10%, projects 20%, midterm exam, which is 25%, and the final exam, which is 25%. So those are weights, right? Those are relative frequencies, percents. And then you'll have grades over here, and then you'll be able to figure out your grade overall in the class. A very handy skill to know how to do this as a student. Just as a side note, I have had former students come to me and say, I don't think my professor is calculating my grade correctly. Can you do this for me? And sure enough, they were right. And they were able to um, have their grade changed because the, the professor was not doing it correctly. I also have had some um, students tell me that, oh, my professor uses points, right? So they make it, you know, out of 800 points total. And this is 300 and this is 300 and so on. Well, points are just weights, right? They just don't feel like dealing with the percentages because they're afraid of the math, perhaps. But it's there, right? It still works, even if it's points for your particular professor. Okay. Now, the other reason for learning this is because I always get these questions in the last week of the class, which is, what do I need to get on the final? right? So Larry, I made up a student named Larry, um, wants to calculate his grade in his statistics class during the week before taking his final exam. You might find yourself in that boat, right? The week before the final. Larry has received a score of 70.8% on his midterm exam, 74.3% on his projects. His online, my stat lab homework, MSL, my stat lab, is 35.4% and his classwork has a score of 90.6%. We're going to construct a relative frequency distribution of his grades, leaving the final exam blank because, of course, he has not taken it yet. All right, so let's go back up here to the categories. We have classwork. Now, strictly speaking, this category section is not necessary, but of course, for your own self, I would write this down because you will be able to find your grades in your class based on this example. Now, your professor might have slightly different percentages. That's okay. Right? But it should be the same idea and concept. All right, so there are the categories. Now let's read through this. He hasn't taken the final, so the final is blank. We're just going to leave that blank for right now. Oh, I could put these in right now. This is point 0.2, this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2, this is point 0.25, and this is point 0.25. Right? I didn't do the percentages. I did the relative frequency as a decimal. So, but it, I mean, they are percentages because this is 20% and so on. All right. So now the grades. He has, let's see, 70.8 on his midterm. So that's this one right here. 74.3 on projects. 90.6 up here on classwork. And 35.4 right here. Now, you can make all of these decimals. You can make it 0.906 and 0.354. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I just find that it's easier to do these ones as the regular numbers and these ones as the relative frequency decimals. But if you want, you could do whole number, whole number, decimal, decimal. You'll just have to move your decimal place for your final result. All right. So now, what's the highest grade Larry could receive in the course? Hmm. So the highest grade would be to let the final exam be 100%. So what you're going to do is take that blank and fill it in at 100. All right, so let's do this in StatCrunch briefly. So I have my categories right there, and then I have the grades right here. I'm going to put them in. And then what I'm going to do is fill in 100 down here. So then I'll go to Stat, Summary Stat, Grouped Bin Data. The categories, I mean the bins, are in grade, right? Even though the word parts are categories, they're not really useful. That's just for our own organizational purposes. And then the counts are the relative frequency. And we really want the mean because that's going to give us the grade in the class. We don't really need to see the rest of the stuff. So let me click Compute. Oh, it didn't like that. Well, that's okay. 
we just want to have to make these into percents. So 20%, 10%, 20%, 25%. And 25%. So if they're integers, this should work. There we go. Integers just means it wants it to be a whole number. And it is. Ooh, 79.22. Boy, that's close. 79.22. So the overall grade would be 79.2%. So I'm going to put that there. And now the grade for that, you'd have to go back up and look. 79.2 is right there in 2.5 because this is really 79.9999999, right? 80 is the start of the 3.0 range and he's not there. So this would be a 2.5 grade. All right. Now what about the lowest grade? Well, the lowest possible grade would be to let the final exam be a zero, which means he doesn't take it, right? So we go back to StatCrunch. I'm going to make this final exam zero enter. And I could go back and rerun it all, but if I just go to options and click refresh, it'll do it right there. It's 54.22. I'll just say 54.2. It's fine. I don't need the 2.2. All right, what grade would that be? Well, let's go back and look. So 54.2% oh, is down here. It's a 0, 0.0. Ouch. So we've learned a valuable lesson. Always take your final exam, right? Always take that final. And of course, quickly, I can show you how to do the same thing in your calculator if you want to use the calculator rather than stack crunch. The calculator actually will take decimals. So I could write them as decimals or as whole numbers in the calculator. It'll work either way. So this is 90.6, 35.4, 74.3, and so on. I'll put the zero in. We'll get him as lowest grade. And you can do decimals or you can do whole numbers. Either one will work. And then of course you want to get your freak on. So leave your frequency list. Otherwise there's no point in having it. Right, which is these relative frequencies right here. And see right there, 54.22. Ouch. Right? So this is L1, this is L2. You want to use your frequency list. Right? If you're going to do it in the calculator. Me personally, I think StatCrunch is a little easier. However, StatCrunch required them to be whole numbers. We can make a little note. So for stat crunch, use 20, 10, 20, 25, 25, right? Because they're really all percents. So that's what you're using instead. It works out the same either way. All right. Now, last but not least, hmm, what's the minimum grade he needs to get um, to have on the final exam to earn a 3.0 in the course? Hmm. Okay. Now there's a trial and error way to do this, and then there's the algebra way to do this. And I'll show you both. Um, but remember, you're not an algebra class. So in general, we don't require the algebra way to do it. But it could be interesting. And maybe you might find it easier, especially if you liked algebra. All right. So and I'm just going to use StatCrunch because it's quick and easy. <laughs> so what you can do in here is you can mess around. If he wants to receive a, let me go back, a 3.0 in the course, um, that's actually not possible. Sorry, that's a typo. Um, we want to receive a 2.0. We want to pass. I'll fix that for future. So, so if he wants to pass the class, right, which is what I always want. You know, students are always like, what do I need to pass? <laughs> what do I need to pass this class? So it's a very good question to ask. So we just want him to pass the class. All right. Well, we can just try different values. So you can go to StatCrunch and try different numbers. Try, let's say, what if what if he got a 50%? So make this a 50, enter. And then click Options, Refresh, and it should work it for you, right? Right there. So 66.72, that's not passing. Passing is a 70% overall. Matter of fact, we could maybe even say that. So to pass, you need a 70% overall. That's what we're shooting for. 
and 50% was not enough. <laughs> okay, so then you go back, oops, sorry, back to the stat crunch, and you try a different number. Try, um, let's see, 70. Okay, so if I try 70, and when you do this, when stat crunch, you have to press enter twice. So I type it, and I press enter, enter, and then it takes it. So then I refresh again. Ooh, that's high enough, right? So that's passing, but that's not the minimum score he would need to pass. So now we can go in here and try 65. Enter, enter, and then refresh. Ooh, getting close, right? So we want 70 point, oh, we want as close as we can get to 70. So let's try 63. Enter. Oh, right there, look. 63 was 69.97. And 64, I bet, will be it. So let's press 64, enter, enter. You have to press enter twice in stat crunch. There it is. 63 was not passing, 64 is. So that's called trial and error, right, what we're doing there. So we're just trying out different things. So method number one, um, let me just put it right here. Method number one, it's trial and and error, right? You try, it's not working, you try again, it didn't work, you tried again, it didn't work, and you were getting closer and closer until you find the actual number. So 64 on the final leads to an overall grade of 70.22%, which is passing, right? Which is a 2.0. So that's method number one. You can do the same thing in your calculator. When you're in stat edit, you just go down to the zero and fiddle around until you find the right one. So if I type 64 in here, because I happen to know the answer, stat, calculate, I keep doing that, one variable, get your freak on, right, leave your frequency list as L2, and there you see it, 70.22. Wonderful. All right. Now, if you want to see the algebra, I can show it to you. Okay, so think about the formula. So the formula that we had said that the mean, and actually I'm gonna draw a little line in here so we don't get these two methods confused. The mean is the sum of x times the weights over the sum of the weights, right? So that would be 90.6 times 0.2 plus 35.4, that's 35.4 times 0.1 plus 74.3 times 0.2 plus 70.8 times 0.25 plus, and then here's the algebra, x times 0.25, because I don't know what the final exam score is, so you're putting x in for it, right? This is the final exam. And then you add them all up and you divide by the sum of the weights, however, what do the sum of the weights make? Well, they better make 100%. Otherwise, your professor's done something wrong because weights have to add up to 100%. So it has to add up 0.2 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.25. It's 1. So it's easy. All right. Now, I know that looks really awful. But remember, I have a calculator. It will find what these four numbers are when I add them and multiply them. Allow me. So if I grab this. I'm just going to quit to get out of here. If you ever you're in a menu that you don't want to be in, second mode, it gets you to quit, which is nice. So then I'm going to type 90.6 times 0.2 plus 35.4 times 0.1. Sorry, my 35 looks weird. I'm going to make that a 35. <laughs> make that better. There we go. Now it looks more like 35. And then plus 74.3 times 0.2 plus 70.8 times 0.25. All right, so I get that this whole thing is 54.22 plus 0.25x. And now think about what we need it to be. We need it to be bigger than or equal to 70 overall, right? So we need this thing to be equal to 70. Well, actually, we need it to be greater than 70. Okay, so we need to be bigger than 70 because 70 is passing, right? So that's why I picked 70. So we want to be more than 70 so that we can pass this class. 
Okay, so then subtract 54.22 from both sides. So take 70 and subtract 54.22, which gets you 15.88. So 0.25x is greater than or equal to 15.78. Divide both sides by 0.25. Oh, I should have, here, what I did was subtract 54.22, right? Subtract 54.22. All right, and that gets me, let's see, 15.78 divided by 0.25 is 63.12. So x has to be bigger than 63.12, but you can't score 0 0.12, at least we don't think you can. So we're going to go with a whole number, which means 64. Right, we round up. Now, if that's just too much algebra and you can't handle it, no problem. Right, you're not required to use algebra. It's just I put it in here so if you like algebra or if you want to see the formula or see why it's working the way it is, that's why it's working the way it is. But if you want to just do trial and error method, that should be fine as long as your professor is okay with that. Right. So if your professor wants you to use the algebra method, that's how to do it. It'll work either way. You should be able to find that it has to be bigger than 64, right there.